one of the simplest yet most effective ways of catching carp has to be a bomb and loose feeding hard pellets. thing about bomb fishing is you can tailor your approach to suit the conditions no matter what time of the year and how many fish you're feeding. By that what I mean is you can change the size of pellets you're using and also the volume of bait you're feeding. To get the most out of this method, what you choose and how much of it you choose to feed will often make or break your day. I want to show you how to get the most out of this deadly tactic. fishing with a bomb and loose feeding hard pellets is just how versatile it is and what I mean by that is I can change the size of the pellet that I'm feeding the amount of whatever pellet I'm feeding to suit the conditions that I'm faced with not just in terms of the air temperature but how many feeding fish are in front of me so I'm going to try and give you a few tips as to when I'd look to use each pellet so I'm going to do it by venue so I'm going to take Lindone for example Brilliant venue, absolutely solid with fish, loads of smaller, you know, let's say smaller fish, but big F1s, loads of carp, but on a lot of the lakes, they're quite small there. So what I mean by that is you don't have to fish and feed very far, but the other thing is you're gonna have lots of males in your peg eating. So at that type of venue, I wouldn't really wanna feed eight meals because say I'm gonna feed, you know, 10 pellets twice, I'm going to have a lot of feeding fish in my peg, whereas I could feed that same volume in terms of size of, say, 10, 8 mils, but that might be 50 or 60, 4 mils. So by feeding 50 or 60, 4 mils, 50 or 60, 4 mils, and then chucking my bomb into it, I've got loads of smaller particles in my peg that all these F1s and an odd carp, I'm keeping volumes of fish feeding in my peg. So that's when 4 mils really comes into its own. Normally, warmer, mumps and when you've got loads of mouths feeding in your peg and again when distance is not that important and then moving down to the six mil hard pellets six mils are good when distance is important so take here to the today we're at the glebe fishery it's quite wide here on lake one and i always think distance between where you're sat and trying to get the fish feeding the further you can separate you between where you're sat and where the fish are feeding, normally the more you're gonna catch because they're just gonna feel a lot more comfortable eating, you know, further away from you. So here today, I've got the option, to be honest, of fishing all three. There's lots of mouths to feed in here. They're hungry and it's warm. So I could feed fours, I could feed six meals, and I could even feed eight meals. But if I was going to say, you know, a slightly smaller lake here, then six meals for me really come into their own. This again is a general guide, you know, you can go to a massive open water lake and feed four meals. This is why it's so good fishing a bomb and loose feeding, is you can mess around and change your approach. But I'm just trying to give you sort of a simple guide of when I'd look to use each one. And then lastly, moving on to the eight mil pellets. Again, I touched on it a little bit with the six mils. When you go to a big venue, so Gold Valley, Larford on the Specimen Lake, Meadowlands, where you believe distance is important, getting away from yourself, trying to fish and feed as far away from yourself as possible, that's when eight meals, in my opinion, really come into their own. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is tailor, tailoring your approach in terms of what you're feeding and how much you're feeding to the time of year and again how many fish are feeding in your peg. So we could come here today at the Glebe Fishery, 
it's still quite warm. You're looking around, the fish are buzzing around everywhere. You're seeing loads of blows coming up. The fish are active, they're feeding. So we could feed any bait today. It's just working out on the day what's going to be best. Our technique's still going to say, stay the same. It's just playing around with what size pellets are better. But just say I come here in the winter time and nothing's feeding. You know, you're looking, you're not seeing any fish move. The best thing about fishing with a straight lead is I can still loose feed, but just tailor it all down. So today I might be feeding, pick eight mils for example, I might be feeding 10 to 15 eight mils two or three times and then chucking my bomb, winding onto it, setting our little trap. And because the fish are active, they're gonna be eating all that bait and they're confident, they wanna feed. So I wanna, you know, give them the bait. But if I come here in the winter time, they might not want to feed early. So I might be dobbing, you know, a bit of bomb and bread around or bomb and punch meat where that's allowed. That's a brilliant way of starting or even a little method feeder. But then it'd be quite hard, but there will become a window and it's normally that latter part of the day. So after maybe an hour, hour and a half of dobbing around, trying to, you know, nick an odd fish, I just pick me eight mils up but I change my approach to suit. So I might only feed two or three pellets every four or five minutes. And then when that light starts to fade, that latter part of your session or your match, depending on what you're fishing, there will always be that window when them fish want to feed. And just pinging two or three eight mils and then chucking your bomb on it late on, you can often get that little run of feeding fish. Moving on to hook bait choice. This is so, so important because whatever you choose to feed, um, regarding size of your pellets, the volume of pellets, you're going to have, and what you're trying to create is competition of fish eating in your peg. So they're eating all your loose offerings. Now, a match the hatch, you know, feeding, um, sorry, what you've got on the hook, um, what you're feeding, put that on the hook, that can be really good. But more often than not, to be honest, I find a different hook bait really good. Now, this is confidence and depending on the venue and this was so nice about this style of fishing is you can tinker around with it and i often find that certain venues certain hook baits work really well now when the fish are feeding i'll be perfectly honest my go-to hook bait is a light colored coppins pellet i'm going to talk about the feed pellets in a minute but a light colored coppins um, hook pellet for 99% of my fishing, that's the one I'm so confident with because regardless of what I'm feeding, that seems to be such a brilliant hook bait. And what I would say with that as well is when you know the fish are feeding well, a lot of the time there's a lot of color in the water. But as you're going into the winter time, maybe the color of the water is dropping out. And again, this is trial and error. I'm just trying to give you a few tips. But that's when I would say, you know, a red pellet, single double hook baits. Again, play around with the size of your hook baits. But red pellets, I think, really come into their own when it's clear water. Now, the last thing that I want to touch on is um, what pellets would I look to feed, given the choice? Here today at the Glebe, I can use whatever you know pellets I want. Now, personally, I would always opt for the Coppins style pellet rather than the Scrattons. The reason being is we're fishing and feeding hard pellets. We've got a hard pellet on the hook and we're feeding hard pellets. The fish, they love eating them. There's some about them, even in the winter time, where they like crunching the bait. And the best thing with coppins compared to scrattons pellets is they take longer to absorb the water. So if you was loose feeding your scrattons pellets, when they're going in the water, they just absorb the water quicker and they're not a hard pellet. And I really believe, especially carp, they love, there's something about hard pellets. They just love crunching them. So I would always opt for, you know, a coppins pellet personally when I can use what I want. Now, the last thing is Again, quickly touching on hook baits, but this is very much venue dependent. And again, it's more down to the winter time. When you're allowed, punch me can be a deadly, deadly hook bait. But when it really comes into its own, it's in the winter time. And I think there's just something about me, the fish know what it is, and you can be pinging a few pellets, and they come in, they know what they are, they go down and they'll eat an odd one. And yes, you will catch them, but that's when punch meat can really come into its own. And I think it works so well because it's the softness of the bait. They know what it is. But the biggest thing I think is the color. 
So again, when that water's going clear, that lighter coloured hook bait definitely makes a massive difference, you know, in clear water, especially when it's cold. When it comes to starting your session or your match regarding bomb and pellet fishing, I think the most important thing is priming. Now, a few people might be thinking, Paul, what do you mean about priming? What I mean by that is loose feeding your pellets before you start fishing on it. So if you're coming out pleasure fishing for your session, instead of getting here and setting all your kit up first, the th first thing that you want to get out is your catapult, your pellets, a bait box, and literally just start feeding a few pellets. So again, depending on the time of the year, but I'm going to be touching on this as we're doing it, is how many pellets you want to start. So I'm um, because again, looking around, there's plenty of fish moving around. It's nice and mild. I know the fish are going to respond to bait. They're still looking for a bit of, you know, a bit of bait. So I'm just going to feed sort of anywhere between probably 10 and 15 pellets twice with a catapult. I'm going to feed eight mils today. But if it's your session, just get here as you're setting your bits up. So set your landing net pole up, pick your catapult up every couple of minutes and loose feed a few pellets. And I'd really want to be doing that sort of 20 minutes, half an hour before I went in on it. Now, if you were starting your match, unfortunately, it'd be lovely if we could do that whilst we're setting up, but we know that's not allowed in the rules. So if it was a match today, I'd either start short, start off on a feeder. Again, watching the method feeder video, that is a brilliant way of starting your peg. But with your bomb line, you want to be priming it. And the idea is to gather as many fish there as possible start eating the pellets and if you could imagine it you know um getting them fish there without pressuring them without trying to catch them so then when you do cast in so you feed your pellets cast in on it the fish they're already used to eating looking for them pellets they're going to be really confident and they're going to be quite easy to catch again in your matches timing's everything talking more about the winter you might be dobbing about a bit to start with and then when the fish want to feed then priming it but I always think the best days you have on the bomb are the days when you can feed it for the longest amount of time and not actually fishing for them so I'm just going to bait up with my light coloured 8 mil pellet to start with we've been priming it for sort of I don't know 20 minutes or so now and I can see some fizzing coming up where I've been loose feeding my pellets and that's a sure fire giveaway that there's some fish rooting around on the bottom for them pellets. So I know there's some fish there, so I'm more than happy to be able to start. So I can put my pellets in my catapult to start with, a nice gentle fire with my pellets. I've got my rod in between my legs, just so it makes it nice and easy to be able to cast just past where I've fed my pellets and then wind me lead onto it so I'm just going to tighten up to my rod swing my little butt rest around lift that up and then just gently tighten up to your rod and what I was saying before with this method why it's so nice is you can fish all year round with this and it's very much dependent on the venue and the time of the year with your feeding so a few tips that i want to give you throughout today's session is accuracy of feeding how much to feed when to be feeding and one of the best little tools that you can ever get even if you're not match fishing is having a stopwatch and what that allows me to do is feed me bait chuck just past to wind onto my bait and then put my rod down so i've set my trap if you can imagine it We've loose fed our pellets, they're all the way around on the bottom. By casting just past and winding onto it, where them pellets have landed on the bottom, our hook bait is right in amongst it. And then by using my stopwatch, what that's going to give me is a gauge. By looking at my rod tip, little signs that I'm getting. If I'm getting signs, I know that the fish are in the peg. If my rod tip's just sat there and I'm not getting any signs, I'm not seeing any signs, I might be on it a little bit too soon. So there, I've just had a little liner. But again, I can look down at my stopwatch I'm just over a minute into my cast. But by using my stopwatch, what that's going to give me is a rough idea of bites. You know, the quicker the bites you get in, it's telling you that the fish want a bit of bait. 
at times if you're waiting too long for bites. More so in the winter time, that's sort of a separate issue, but when it's warm, you know, if you're waiting too long for bites, it's not always the case that the fish don't want to feed. You might not be feeding, you know, enough pellets and often enough. So I'm looking around, see a nice big ghostie just about to swim underneath me rod tip, looking around at, you know, the conditions and seeing what the fish are doing. So there, I've just had another little sign of my rod tip. All of these things I'm trying to take in because what's so nice about this is I'm in control of how much I feed. I can fire two pellets in and leave it out there for five or six minutes. I can fire, you know, 15, 20 pellets in twice and I might be able to leave it out there for five, six, eight, ten minutes at a time. But as a general guide, the more the fish want to feed, the more pellets you can loose feed and the quicker your casts. So this time of the year, you can see the fish are nice and active, they're moving around, getting activity, I'm getting signs on my rod tip. So as a rule in my mind, I'm probably gonna need, leave it no longer than sort of four or five minutes and then I'm gonna wind in and I'm gonna do the same again. So we've just had our first bite and it's been four minutes and 29 seconds. So that is a big thing for me using our stopwatch. So it's our first cast. I know that there was some fish there because again, I could see that fizzing and that's just giving me confidence that some fish are on my bait. And now what is the case is working out how much do I need to feed and how often do I need to cast? Now, without being too technical, one thing that I want to touch on is the length of your hook length. And here today at the Glebe, the fishery rules state that the hook length has got to be 20 inches. Now that does make them a lot harder to catch, to be honest. I know if I could fish a little six inch hook length, I would be able to get so many more bites. And one thing that I want to show you, when you are faced with you know, certain rules, just before I caught this fish, I actually pulled the line on, on my rod um, to try and straighten my hook length out, which I feel is really, really important. So, if they're flipping about, just if you cover their eyes, normally they'll be absolutely fine. See how it's just calmed down a bit now. So, nice little carp to start. Just gently popping back. So we've hooked our fish. This part of your bomb fishing, I can't stress how important this is. So a lot of your hook lengths, you know, if you tie your own, you want to put a bit of silicon on it. But the nice thing about this technique is you can buy ready tie hooks and a lot of them with your bands that you're going to put your pellet on, you'll have a little bit of silicon on it. So the first thing that I want to do is check the point of my hook because with this technique, you're reliant on the fish sucking the bait in, it, the, your hooks razor sharp, so it just touches its skin, and that's why you get that type of bite, because it's just sort of pricked itself. The hook's in, but it's not fully in. Now, without that hook being razor sharp, you just get that on your rod tip, where it's turned and it's dislodged the hook, where it's not razor sharp. So a little tip there, when you pleasure fishing, you know, if you're going out for your session, you're getting an odd one of those, just change your hook. But the little thing that I like doing is just rubbing my hook just downwards. And if you feel any sort of indentation, any, you know, just where the hook point, hooks are so sharp nowadays and they're at such a fine point, they can easily knock over. Never gonna last forever. But if you just gently rub away from the point of your hook, if you feel like it's really smooth, there's a good chance that it's gonna be nice and sharp another little thing that you can do is just gently touch your skin and if it nicks your skin like so you know that it's still sticky sharp like there i've just touched it in my skin and you can see it's hanging on and that's all you need so once i've checked the point of my hook and i know that's still sharp now it's a case of making sure your hair is in place and what i mean by that is that your, your hair is coming off um, the back of your hook and that your band's nicely in position like so so now when I bait up, put my pellet on my band, I'm confident that when I'm gonna cast out, I know that my hair's in the right position. You don't want it kicking off at a funny angle. 
and that's why you need that silicon on there. So that way, when I put my pellet on, it's going to sit nicely at the bottom of the bend of the hook. I know I've got a razor sharp hook on, and that's just going to help us catch more fish. So I'm going to bait up again, hook pellet wise, a nice light coloured 8 mil coppings. It's always, if I'm never sure what to put on the hook, if I go into a new venue, that's always sort of my starting point. And then once I've popped it on, take my time just to make sure that it's sat off my hook nicely. So you can imagine when one comes and sucks that uh, pellet in, my hook point's nicely pointed. It's not kicked off at a funny angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you it at a funny angle. So there you can see that's absolutely perfect. If I just hold it nice and still, that just looks absolutely perfect when that's on the bottom. When one sucks it in, it's going to get absolutely nailed. So what I mean by is if it's a funny angle, your hair's not in the right position. So again, if you go to cast out now, you can see that my hair's coming off a lot further off the back of my hook because I've not slipped that bit of silicon down. So again, if you're buying pre-tied hooks, a lot of them will come with that bit of silicon. Just make sure that it's slipped nicely down and you just catch so many more. We just had another bite and it's come after literally 55 seconds and since we've started I think the biggest thing with this style of fishing is the fish will always tell you and by having that stopwatch the more I'm doing it the quicker the bites are coming so biggest thing the fish are telling me they want to eat and the more I feed almost the better it's getting. And this is the one difference with this style of fishing is you can change depending on the signs you're getting, how many bites you're getting. You can change how much you're feeding, how often you're casting to suit how good the fishing is on the day. And it's very much, which is lovely, is letting the fish tell you what's best on the day. Some days you'll have it where you might start off quite positive and then when you start feeding a little bit less bait, you're getting quicker bites. So, so lovely, so just pop him out. Another nice common, just pop him back. So with our little technique, we've gone through making sure the hook point sharp, which is the most important thing because that's the only thing connecting you to the fish. So always, no matter how good the fishing is, always wait, make sure that your hook's nice and sharp. And it is tempting just to bait up and want to get back out again. I'm exactly the same, but just do this little bit right, you know, and take your time because it will definitely catch you more fish. So again, little rub of the hook. I know it's still sticky sharp. Put me hair in position. Again, on the day, hook bait, whatever you find's best, but at the moment, just a nice light coloured eight mil coppings. Not too big, just a nice size one. Pop him on my band, just get my band nice and central. A little thing here, when you are putting your pellet on the hook, 
a lot of the time when you're copping pellets they're not perfectly round like a boilie so I always want to make sure that my hair is coming off almost at the thinnest point of the hook and I think that is really important because as the fish sucks it up if it was this way around it's going to be harder for that hook to actually grab hold so just make sure that it's coming off the thinnest point of your hook and then once you're happy with it give it a little check yep I'm perfect with that so I'm good to cast out now your little routine your little technique when it comes to bomb fishing the most important thing is when we're feeding our pellets where they land is we want our hook bait exactly where it lands so instead of chucking your bomb out and then where your bomb lands trying to feed to it you're better off just doing it in reverse so once i'm happy i'm ready to cast so my line's not too long not too short so then we can just pop it in between our legs like so and now it's a case of feeding our pellets again on the day how much what size pellets that's all dependent on the day but today the bite time's getting less and less and less i want to make sure that i'm feeding enough I think this bit's really important is make sure you know you're feeding the fish so feed my pellets once just fire them nice and up in the air feed my pellets twice one actually turn where my pellets have landed then now your little bit that you want to be doing is not aiming for your pellets you're saying just past and then wind onto it now the reason why I think that bit is so important is especially when it's hard so in the winter time we might only be feeding you know four or five pellets twice there's definitely times when you know you can feed too much winter time and definitely times summer time where you're not feeding enough so I just set my stopwatch but if you do it like that feed your bait and then chuck just past and wind onto it one every single time you feed and wind onto it you know that your hook and your hook bait is exactly where your pellets have landed and the second thing which i think is really important especially here today because we've got to use such a long hook length is i'm straightening my hook length out whereas if i just chucked my bomb out and stopped it your bomb's going to sink really quickly obviously because it's very heavy and your hook length's just going to land directly on top of it. Now, if you go into a venue where you can use a short hook length and it can be absolutely deadly, the length of your hook length. So, again, if you go into one of those type of venues and you're getting little signs on your rod tip, little knocks, but you're not getting millions of bites, try using a, a six and eight inch hook length. The difference it can make is unbelievable. Whereas here, because it's the fishery rules where we've got to have that 20 inch hook length it's such a long hook length that if i feel if i don't cast past and wind onto it the chance of that fish sucking the hook pellet up and then tightening itself against the bomb or the rod tip is just going to be a lot harder but you see from that bite we literally set our little trap fed our pellets and as soon as you chuck on it wind onto it got that sharp hook it's just a license to catch lots of fish now, whilst we're playing this fish when it comes to loose feeding you might at times you fire your pellets out and they get caught with the wind a little bit or you're feeding you think mm, they didn't land that good i honestly think especially when it's warm and we're saying that even in the colder months i think one of the biggest reasons why this is so good is you've got that spread of bait so you've got plenty of fish eating in your peg and again that's why priming it is so so important you get the fish there get them you know eating the pellets i'm just going to slide my bomb down nice and gently because it's free running just slide it nice and gently it's just where it run off at a million mile an hour that's all so keep, try and keep your rod low and then lift it up as the fish comes in and you'll find that you're not spending as long playing them then. and now it's a case is just keep doing what we're doing until i think something's changed again doing all the little things right so just untangle him again just nicely cradle him lift him up from a net he's hooked absolutely smack in the bottom of the mouth so just take the hook out 
another nice common. Just pop him back. Another nice fish. So talking through the tackle that we've got set up, it's nice and simple, um, your bomb and your straight lead fishing. So starting off with your rod, you're only ever going to be fishing where you can loose feed your pellets, so you don't need a ridiculously long rod. 10 foot's absolutely perfect. Really, you want a nice, soft action rod. The bites can be quite violent at times, so that's just going to help you with uh, fish losses. So a nice sort of soft action rod, that's absolutely perfect. 10 foot, again, that's spot on. Nice, it just makes fishing with it so much easier when you've got a nice short rod. And then moving down to our sort of terminal tackle, eight pound reel line, I think that is the one. Six pound, I think is a bit too light. Again, sometimes your bites can be so vicious and with them being um, quite vicious, the bites, playing them off the clutch, six pound, I think is a bit too light. Eight pounds, absolutely perfect. It's lovely to cast off. It's nice and durable. It won't let you down. Again, 10 pound, it's probably a bit too heavy. So I'll just stick to eight pound. And then bomb choice, I feel that's very personal. Some people love a light bomb. Um, I personally like what I would say is a slightly heavier bomb than what I need. Again, talking through our fishing and winding onto the bait. By having a slightly heavier lead, I can always get just past my bait. It's nice and accurate, especially on days when it's windy, and winding onto it is lovely. Again, this, you know, bomb set, bomb set up depends on the fishery, but I'll be perfectly honest, I like fishing with a free running bomb, and I like using a snap link swivel, so I can clip on and off my bombs. But if you like an inline one, it's absolutely fine. But personal preference, I would say, with your, um, with your bomb in terms of what you like. What is important is your hook length in terms of the, the length. That Again, you've got to play around with that and that depends on the fishery rules. But I, I have two hook lengths, to be honest. They're the only two that I tie up. So the one we're using today is 022 down to a 10QM1. Now that might sound like a big hook, but because it's sort of a circular shaped hook, it's not like a, what I would say is a, a traditional sort of size 10, but I use a 10 to 022, and then I tie a 12 QM1 up to 020. Again, touching on the size of the fish, how violent the bites can be. I think, I don't think fish, if I fish say, 012 on a hard day that I would get any more bites than by fishing 020 and a 12 or 022 and a 10. The reason being is your hook clamp is on the bottom. It's different when it's going through the water. I just feel, I genuinely feel like you hook more fish using a big hook. So I'm just going to let him calm down, get my disgorger. Gorger in that. There. there we are. I'm looking nicely. Another mad common. Fighting like mad. So now it's just a case of keep doing what you have been doing. But remember, now I keep touching on it. Sharpness of the hook. Then get your hair in position. Again, pick your pellet that you think's best. Just got a few ants running around me at the moment, crawling all over me. But make sure it's nicely in position. Rod in between your legs. This bit will take you a little bit of practice, but trust me, it'll catch you so many more fish. Today, just it's, it's just a nice sort of fire of my pellets again grouping them the best i can but i'm not overly stressing my catapult out so just wind onto it nice and gently and the last thing that i would like to talk about is at the moment feeding twice and then casting 
right on top of it, you know, or just past, winding right on top of it. We're getting such quick bites. We're feeding them pellets. There's a load of noise. As them pellets fall, fall into the bottom, you can imagine the carp under the water. They're following them down, trying to grab each and every one of them. And hopefully, with our hook bait right in that little position, it's going to pick it up by mistake, just like that, and it's fish on. Now, on another day, they might need a little bit more encouragement. So feeding whilst your bomb's in the water, that can be really good at times. And it's almost just one, just say, if you're having one of those days where you get most of your bites at sort of five or six minutes, and I'd say about four minutes, just when you think for four, four and a half minutes, picking your catapult up and loose feeding, um, six, seven pellets, just making a little bit of noise. And then sometimes either pulling your line in between your rod, you know, and your first eye, like pulling it just to move your lead or even picking your rod up and just bouncing the hook bait along the bottom a little bit. Sometimes that can catch you an odd wary one as well. And you see it's such an efficient way of fishing. Milk's actually just popped out on, on that one. But the only reason it's like this is because we've primed it and obviously the fish are responding on the day. They want some bait. But I'd say the biggest thing with your bomb fishing is priming, you know, and even on the hardest of days, I've had it when, you know, hour and a half, two hours into my, what would be my match and blanking, not had a bite, but I've been religiously pinging two or three pellets every four or five minutes keep making that little bit of noise that's how you're going to attract them fish in the peg that little bit of noise of them pellets landing especially when it's clear they can see them falling through the water and late on they drop on it and i've had some of my best days in the winter time fishing like this just tailoring my approach to suit I'm feeding a lot less pellets, so three or four pellets, three or four pellets, and I'll deliberately do other things for the first, I'm gonna say probably two and a half hours into my match, if it was pleasure fishing, you know, then feed a few pellets out of the way, because the fish are always gonna back off from you in the winter time, but flicking a few pellets, and then sort of halfway through the match, two hours to go, just bait up, I've had no line in the water there, chuck flick a few pellets in chuck just past wind onto it put your rod down you've had no signs no bites all day long and you get that little run and it rewards you because you're the one that's been flicking a few pellets in there all day long so this is definitely not just a summer method and there's so many different ways you can do it again what we spoke about lindome earlier a brilliant venue solid with f1s and carp go in there and fish in four meals rather than feeding sort of six or eight meals. Well, there's one lake there actually called Loco Lake, which is a lot bigger than the rest of them. On that lake, a million percent, I'd only feed eight meals. They're big carp in there. But again, it's that distance, that separation between where you're sat and where the fish feel most comfortable feeding. But it's a brilliant method all year round and you can change it with bait you know, the size of your pellets. they quite often be an optimum length for hook length, an optimum amount of bait. And again, by using your stopwatch, it gives you that information. How quick am I getting the bites? How much bait am I feeding? But I've absolutely loved it today. Um, I'd love to say that I'm gonna pack up. <laughs> there's no way I'm packing up when it's this good. But hopefully there's a few tips in, in there for you to hopefully catch you, you know, a few more fish next time you're out. I wanna end on just touching on a few things that I think is really important. Length of your hook length. Honestly, the difference that can make some days, fishing sort of 12, 15 inch hook length, change to a six inch hook length, all of a sudden you start getting bites. That's really important. Play around with what you're feeding. Sometimes four mils, sometimes six mils, sometimes eight mils, just working it out. Again, hook length, um, hook bait, that, play around with that. But the biggest thing I wanna touch on is 
And this is what I'd like to end on, is if you're getting an odd one of those and it's not turning into bites, biggest, biggest thing, I guarantee you, the end of your hook point's going. So I don't know why I'm putting the rod down because I'm going to have another cast, but hopefully um, you've enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time around the bank.